And Fitzgerald's kick lands beyond the end line. So here comes Max Brown. Now he's and Billy Napier's worked with a lot of different quarterbacks in his career. May go back to the Louisiana playbook to see if he now has this dual threat to work with. Trevor Etienne gets the first carry tonight. The tailback Tannen has begun to feature Etienne more and more. Montrell Johnson is healthy, but we'll see a lot of number seven tonight. Yeah, seven, I think, is the guy to watch. He's healthy, great balance. Pierce saw on the outside. Number one is the guy to watch in the slot. Cheer first. Big concern for Florida on third downs with his ability to rush the quarterback. It's good to see DeLoach back, DeLoach back in healthy on this defense. He can blitz and bring a lot of pressure himself. O-line's been a problem for the Gators. Reshuffled again tonight. ETN comes in motion. Brown took a look, tries to use his legs, and is stopped at the line of scrimmage by Jared Verse and Patrick Payton off the edge. Now they are well schooled Verse that time coming around. Their eyes are on the quarterback. Very different attack for Adam Fuller. So look at that offensive line. It's been beat up a lot this year. Damian George moves over to left tackle. They've had a, a kind of musical chairs this year, and Florida State hopes to expose them up front. Extra responsibility, Kirk, for Jake Slaughter, the center, to call the protections. That's something Mertz did extremely well, but he's got to help out Brown in that department tonight. And here's third and six. Knowles rush four, good production. Pass is caught over the middle on a first down to Trey Wilson. He's the underneath receiver, very reliable target. Ball moves near the 45. Now, ETN's right here. He'll take the backer with him, and that opens up a nice, easy read. Read the backer, goes outside. Receiver from the outside works back in. Good job with his eyes downfield there on that third down. 16-yard play should give him a boost of confidence in the early going. ETN makes a cut. Slips through a tackle and knocked down after about a seven-yard game. Yeah, Jake Slaughter, that center. Watch this block right here by the big man. You just talked about taking on more responsibilities. Good job sustaining that block and allows the, the talent at ETN to get north and south. Put that foot in the ground and picked up yards. Got it again. Again, dragged down by Patrick Payton. The Gators would love to have third downs like this tonight to need a yard. Yeah, you want to stay right there with a young, inexperienced quarterback against this defense. Knowles very, very good on third down. Third best in the FBS, but anybody feels more comfortable than you just need a yard. They have a quarterback run now in play with Brown at quarterback compared to Mertz. He keeps it. Had to dodge a man in the backfield. You saw some nimble feet because Verse was there, but couldn't wrap him up. First down. Yeah, Mer Mertz, uh, uh, not Mertz, but Verse, it's like an ole. He didn't take anybody. It's a good job with Brown trusting his athletic ability. Verse just misses. And that's what gave Brown a chance to keep that play alive. I think he was unsure on that read. Instead, he just pulls it and keeps it himself. And again, there's the threat to his legs on a third down play. Verse, an elite pass rusher, one of the leaders of this defense, the transfer from Albany, had a great season. Brown fights through some pressure in the pocket and is going to be knocked down at the line of scrimmage. You can tell Kirk, but he doesn't see that initial read. He's going to be looking at... Oh, oh yeah, and, and they're, they're trying to dial up the pressure. You'll see four come around the edge. It comes in clean. There's the athletic ability being able to step up away from both the backers. Bethune, Bethune came in there as well, but... At least he avoids them and avoids disaster. Knowles fans here, 200 miles from Tallahassee, making some noise. Brown on second and 10. And ETN runs into a wall, driven back. That's big Braden Fisk, the defensive tackle. Boy, does this make a play. I, I've been so impressed with this defensive line all year. Watch the big man here. He takes on that double team, spins out of it, makes the play. This guy was playing in the MAC last year, and now he's become a critical part to the interior of this defense, along with 44 Farmer. Got a great, and they've been able to stay healthy, build continuity. Great play there. Now it's third and nine. Montreal Johnson is the back to the right of Max Brown. See if the Knowles dial up pressure. This time they don't. They rush four. Brown backpedals, delivers a long throw, 
Bell looking for Trey Wilson again. He's got it. What a clutch pitch and catch. They're inside the 30. Are you kidding me? So much for inexperience. This is one of the great throws I've seen all year. Off of his back foot, pressure in his face, and over the shoulder makes a great throw. Come through on third down. It's three for three, a 15-yard game. What a start for Brown. Johnson has the football and goes off the right side. That's a solid first down gain of five. Because I, I cannot tell you what kind of throw that was for a young guy that hadn't played a lot. I mean, it, what you don't see is 55 right in his face. Look how tight that window is. And somehow he gets that in there on third and 10. Had to be a perfect throw. Watch 55 get off the block. Fisk right there. And he kind of falls back and makes that throw. On second and five, Johnson not going to get around the edge. That was a keen death, the safety, the senior who made the play. Third it, down. It, we wondered how they would attack with it with a new quarterback, a new style, and we've seen multiple formations, different personnel groupings. We've seen tempo getting mixed up. That's nine runs, only two passes. They've converted three of three on third down, and see what they do on this one. ETN. And the slot to the right. A bunch of receivers bunch to the left. Empty backfield. Again, quarterback run is in play in this kind of situation. It's a pop pass to ETN, and he gets popped. That time, Jared first didn't whiff. They don't get him to the ground, but he goes backwards and a huge loss. Boy, that was a huge play. First is the leader, and these guys all know that they've got to step up and make plays. He just gets upfield and gets vertical. Just nothing that Hanson, Hayden Hanson could do as a tight end because the get off was so quick and so powerful from verse. Play was blown up before it had a chance. So now a field goal attempt. Trey Smack took over field goal duties mid-season and he's been very solid, 15 of 17. This from 48 away to give the Gators an early lead. Drives it, but it slides wide right. It's a very promising opening drive. Some nice throws by Brown, but the big play by the Knowles defense and the missed field goals, and the Gators come up empty. In his first snap, he was a Florida State starter. Trey Benson is behind him. Jaheim Bell's in motion, takes the pop pass, and the tight end is a multiple use weapon gets about four at first down. I don't know why I didn't put Bell up there as one of the impact players, but we know Trey Benson's going to make plays in his run game. Keon Coleman's been such so clutch for these Florida State offense all year. Castile, the young freshman safety, has got to do a really good job and off the edge there. Keep an eye on one. Benson tries to bounce it, retreats, nowhere to run, tries to reverse field still alive somehow that he'll be dragged down way back at the 22 by the true freshman Bryce Thornton a huge loss well, Manny Nunnery does a good job of fighting off this block by Morlock and really sets makes the forces the Benson to work outside I don't know why he just didn't give up on the play I know you're confident in your ability but he just kept trying to find somewhere to go and he kept losing ground they're third and forever yeah he lost 12 on that play about that, your first third down as a starter, and you got 8 17 to go. Gators rush four. It's a screen, and all over it is this Florida defense. Try to get it to Toa and Jason Marshall off the quarter at a three and out. Then once you get to third and long with an inexperienced quarterback, what's coming, Chris? The draw or the screen. Florida's ready for that. Marshall almost waiting for it. Just a step away from getting his hands on that ball, maybe stepping in front of it, walking to the end zone. With a big loss by Trey Benson on that second down play ends up being the drive killer. And now Alex Mastromano, the fourth year Aussie punts, having a great season. Averaging almost 47 yards of boot. Sends another deep one. Ricky Pearsall, number one receiver, also the punt returner, makes the fair catch at the 30. So it's a promising first drive for Max Brown missed the field goal but he showed the ability to execute on third down 
Turns and hands off to Montreal Johnson, who's hit behind the line and fights back for no gain. You know, my first year with you on college game day was 1996. Yep. So the first time I saw Florida, Florida State was in Tallahassee with Peter Bulware and Andre Wadsworth and company sacked Danny Warfel I don't know how many times. Then they met in the Sugar Bowl in the National Championship. They went to the shotgun and they got revenge and ended up winning the national title. That was my introduction to, wow, this is a lot of fun, this rivalry. It's been a lot of fun quite often. That was an amazing day what in a, Tallahassee. Yeah. What, a, what a year. Brown, design run, makes a cut, gets downhill and picks up about nine to set up a third and one. And how about the execution up front by this offensive line? Again, Jake Slaughter, that center, works a double team and then climbs up and gets to the backer. Gives him a chance here again on third down and short. He's living in these third and shorts. And again, they converted three of four on that first drive. Gator opponents never had to worry about the quarterback run when Mertz was in there, but the Knowles have worked on it this week. They know to be ready for it, but Brown saw some quickness. Johnson moves the six first down. What, what's going to happen here is Florida State more and more are going to get, start getting locked in, their eyes into that backfield, worried about either the running back right here or the quarterback pulling it. They're just going to start creeping down, which it means Billy Napier and Max Brown are going to have to start to make them pay for that getting their eyes in the backfield, play action pass, trying to take some shots downfield. Johnson runs right into the arms of Shaheen Brown, the safety. This will set up second and about six. They grew up in Tulsa, didn't start playing until fifth or sixth grade, which is kind of late right, for the standard oh, yeah. these elite quarterbacks. On the move, has a man, but threw it behind Trey Wilson. He was open, inaccurate throw, and it'll be third and six. See, this is what you do. You, you run the ball, and you get action this way, and then you boot the other way. Really good call. Look at the defense all flowing this way, and now you're able to slide a receiver out. As he puts it out in front, look at the room to run. This is where you're going to continue to see I think Florida sprinkle that in on early downs and try to make the Knowles pay for that overly aggressive approach to this Florida run game. His first incompletion sets up a tricky third down here. Knowles rush five, ball out quickly, and that time the catch is made for a first down. Khalil Jackson, the third generation Gator, picks up ten. Good job finding the matchup, one-on-one -on -one matchup against the best cover man in green. He turns him. Heck of a route that time by Jackson to get open and create that separation, making an easy throw on Max for Max Brown. Johnson tackled after about a four-yard gain by Dents. It's a very difficult defense to throw the football against. They have eight picks, only allowed eight touchdown passes. They're tricky. They've been tough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Adam Fuller's done a really good job. He tells you, we got more depth. You know, we're rotating bodies in. Instead of playing 70, 80, 85 snaps, we're playing 30 or 40. It allows us to play at a different speed and a different tempo. They're getting tested tonight right now, trying to figure this scheme out from this new Florida quarterback. Brown on the move. Pump fake delivers a throw down the middle. Another precise throw. That's Hayden Hansen, the tight end. Gators in the red zone. I, I, I think this, he, this, talked about this guy being a baseball player. I thought he'd take the easy throw there. He shows you the confidence that he has. Look at this baseball throw. Zip right in there for a strike and a big game. Really impressive throws by Brown here in the first quarter. Hansen has become a increasingly important weapon in this offense. Now let's see if they can cash into the red zone. Kid's got moxie, man. Sure does. Holly said, play point guard, shortstop, baseball, football, shows. He had some swag in the meeting. I think he felt he was yeah. up to this moment. Pitches on the far sideline. ETM left alone and bangs forward, fights for a first and goal to the five. They forgot about the running back. It's a, it's a good gain and it's a good job of him recognizing this play on the, out to the right here. Watch his holding that gets unnoticed, comes off that. He was trying to pump fake that to ETN, trying to get Florida State to bite on it. But instead, they, they pull down the receiver going downfield, so he checks it back down and gets yards after the catch. Knowles had three defenders worried about the tight end Boardingham, left the dangerous weapon alone. First and goal. 
Final two minutes of the first quarter. It's Pearsall in motion. ETN is swarmed. Again, Verse is a problem off the edge. There's a flag down as well. He sure is, Chris. He's a problem for everybody. Right now, he has his attitude and his intentions on that running back. It's a mistake by Joshua Farmer. Negates the play by Verse and moves him half the distance. I think Farmer might have just lined up offside. I don't, I don't think he jumped, but... The Knowles right now, kind of on their heels. Doesn't it feel like for being an aggressive defense? He's right there. I don't see a flinch. I think he just lined up. You see that right hand right on the line. Helmet maybe across. Two tight ends in the game for the Gators. Brown is going to take a sack. Swarmed again by Braden Fisk and Jared Verse. They, they're not blocking number five so far. No, they're not. There's nothing they can do to slow him down. They had Jackson open. He gets lost. They're trying to work him across the back. But watch Verse just overpower the left side of that offensive line. Damian George just doesn't have the lateral quickness to be able to stay with him and Fisk again. Look at him. Enforcer in the middle having a big night. He's bound for the Senior Bowl. Michigan City, Indiana, played for the Broncos of Western Michigan and has had a strong season here. Plays with a nastiness that you really appreciate from a defense attack. Got a hurry here, by the way, second and goal. They barely get it off and probably should have taken a timeout to settle things down. ETN swarmed that time by Fabian Lovitz. It'll be third and goal. We just be at the end of the quarter. Hey, Chris, real quick, we just talked about the depth, rotating guys in. Look at this. Being a new guy in, look at the quickness. It's like Florida's not even blocking. Just goes right around them with quickness. That's a miscommunication. No showing pressure late here, walking up a linebacker. They bring it, and they knock Brown down. Akeem Dent draws a flag right where the quarterback was hit. So let's see the call. This could be crucial. If it's on Florida State, would set up a first and goal. It's an ACC crew. Jeff Heiser is the veteran referee of the most accomplished guys around. They don't call targeting. They call unnecessary roughness. They didn't say the number. And this is an example. We'll look at the penalty in a second of an inexperienced quarterback. He looks at it. He sees it. They don't make the adjustment with the protection, and you get hit. That's what they got to be careful of. And I'm love to bring Bill. Bill, what do you see here? It can't be on that hit. Bill, what do you if see? They're, if they're calling that on the hit, I'm not a fan of how they're trying. To, I'm all for protecting the quarterbacks. But that was just but a, that that's is just a football. A that's a play. Yeah, that's a tackle. There so, was no okay. number given on the call. They, I can't believe they would have called it on Dents. I hope there was something somewhere else. Wow, what a huge play instead of a field goal attempt. Coming from the 20-yard line, first and goal again at the five. Montrell Johnson, a fake it to him. Brown on the move, looks to the end zone and just has to throw it into the crowd. Nothing there. Hot pursuit by Shaheen Brown, the safety. Bill, I, the, the flag came in right after the contact, so I, I don't know what else it could be. So... Yeah, that, that, and I don't blame Mike Norvell at all. And that, that's Peyton is making a great play on third down. I mean, unnecessary roughness. That was just a regulation pass rush and sack. He, he might have got the hand up near the helmet, but I, I mean, you can't call that. Mickey tag. Come on. And it's a right play, aren't you? Oh, and I'm all, I get these new rules, but not that. Second and goal. Johnson walks in. And the Gators. Take advantage of that controversial call and draw first blood. <laughs> 70 yard drive, 13 plays, took seven minutes. They got bailed out by that penalty. And the Gators. Put Tate Rodemaker and this wow. Knowles team have only run three plays 
and find themselves down seven points. I have to say it again, it's an ACC crew that made the call. Well, this is, there's a lot of Florida State fans who are going to want to know what the heck is this about. The flag comes in from the top right here, right after the hit. I don't know what else it could be, but it sets up this opportunity for Florida. This is what happens with all the bells and whistles. Look at the Florida State defense react to this right here. You got jet motion. You got the tight end off to the left, going out to the right. And look at the linebackers and the safeties react to that. There's nobody left. Their eyes are in that backfield, and they're seeing a different attack than anything that they've studied all year that Graham Mertz has done. It's the largest hole on the goal line I think I've ever seen. Yeah, and Billy, I don't blame him for yeah, being upset. Yeah, I'm with you. Trey Smap to boot it away. And D. Span says, with that bounce. That we love, you know, God's grace just to be able to enjoy this. It's just, it's special. I love it so much. You know, your passion and heart came out while you played. Your locker room speech promising to be better. I watched you win the national championship in the second half against Oklahoma. You put this place on your shoulders time and time again. Why did you care so much? Uh, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I love it. I love being a Gator. I was born a Gator. I played as a Gator. I'll always be a Gator. Uh, my grandfather's dream was to see Florida win an SEC championship, and he died before it happened. And I like to think that when we won, he was watching us. And uh, it really does just mean more. I know you got a chance. I know you got a chance to talk with Max Brown, number 17. What was the advice you gave this young quarterback? That he was created for such a time as this, that he has played this game a long time, and maybe he doesn't have the reps. But that he can go out there with, with full confidence, full trust, that his identity is not in the game. He doesn't have to play with pressure. He doesn't have to play with fear. His identity is not in this game. He gets to go love what he does, and he gets to play all out regardless of what happens. That's not where he's defined, but he does get to go play free. And he was created for this moment. Whatever happens, enjoy it, thrive. Not be timid, but let it rip. And that's what he's been doing so far. Thank you so much, Tim. Appreciate you. Thank you, Appreciate you. Appreciate everything you do for this amazing game. Nobody can get you pumped up like Tebow. A great message. But meanwhile, it's the Florida State quarterback who's under pressure. Tay Rodemaker, they had a false start. He had an incomplete pass on that sideways throw. Yeah, there's a, trying to get the ball out in the flat. Great read by Jaden Hill. Almost picked it off. Second time they've almost picked off a screen. Pass out to the right. Florida all over these high percentage throws with an inexperienced quarterback. Give Austin Armstrong a lot of credit. They're taking all the... Got a flag now on Florida State. It's going to be declined. Second down. Taking away all the spacing. Trying to, if you're going to complete a pass, we're going to make you earn it. You're going to have to go behind us to make plays. But it is a slow start for this Florida State offense. Four plays, minus seven in total yards. Yeah, Benson lost 11 on the one running play they've had so far. Rodemaker just one of three. Crowd is into it now, juiced up here. The rain is falling. There's a lot going against Rodemaker at the moment. He turns and hands the ball off to Toa Feely, who gets nothing in third and long now. Well, if you're keeping score at home, this is rivalry weekend. This is college football, and you kind of expect the unexpected. You got an undefeated team right now on the ropes without their star, without their heart and soul. And Jordan Travis, he means so much to Mike Norvell, what he's done to help elevate this program. He's not here. We all wanted to see how Tate Rodemaker, how the Knowles would react. They knew they, they would get tested here at the Swamp, and that's what they're getting here early into this second quarter. One thing Travis never did was turn the ball over. Rodemaker's got to be careful here on third and 14, not to make a mistake. Raiders big pressure. Rodemaker on the run makes a long sideline throw, looking for Johnny Wilson, who makes the catch. But he's short of the first down, and the punt team comes out. They're getting so far behind the sticks, it's just making it tough to execute and have a chance on third down. He makes a good throw, but they're well short. They're going to go off the field, like you said. Look at Austin Armstrong. It's been a tough year, by the way. This emotion in a rivalry game, bringing the best out of this defense tonight. Playing, he's coaching with fire tonight, isn't he? He's a pumped-up, energized guy, if you know what I mean. But he is 
got to get his guys to sustain. They haven't been consistent. Long way to go, but a positive start. Yeah. Mastromano. With Pearsall standing at the 25. And the play clock winds down. They take a... No, it's a fake! But did the play count? I hear whistles. They tried to fake it, but they took too much time. Delay of game. Preston Daniel took off. Delay of game. All pass. There was a little punt Ruski here, but they didn't execute it in time. Spoils what would have been a huge gain and a momentum changer. Wow, what a what a gutsy call by Mike Norvell. Let's listen for the whistle here. Yep. Wow, close. That whistle seemed to come in right as that ball was being snapped, and the big fella Daniels. Had a chance to pick up that big first down. Boy, Mike Norvell, gutsy call. Just doesn't get it, the snap off. You work on that. You wait for the chance to execute it. You feel like you need a momentum play, and it works. Except there was a second late. That's Romano, who rolls out to his right like a lot of Aussies. He's had to dodge some pressure, then kicks it in the crowd. It landed in the eighth row on the far sideline, and the Gators will have great field position. That's the family section over there for the visiting team. Real positive start. That punt by Mastromano to 16 yards after a 31-yard fake punt was negated by the penalty. Gators take over at the plus 40, and ETN is loose. ETN around the end picks up about 14. Again, I, I, I want to continue to focus on these linebackers, how they're getting lost. They're opening up holes themselves because of the different formations. Good block there on the tight end there. Hayden Hansen it opens it up. But the linebackers' eyes right now with pre-snap movement, they're really getting caught up looking and watching and guessing, and they're busting as far as their gap assignments and filling up those holes. ETN off the left side. You're talking about linebackers for Craig Halen Deloach, Tatum Bethune. They've been part of the strength of this defense. Very experienced, solid players. Yeah, and, and in their defense, you know, and just talking to Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator on the field before the game, I said, what do you think? And this kid, Max Brown, he said, well, we just don't know. You know, we, we think we have an idea. I mean, we know he's a dual guy. We went back, we studied a lot of different things, but imagine one week trying to change everything you've seen from Florida under Graham Mertz to a totally different kind Kind of style with a mobile quarterback so i think they're they're trying to make adjustments here as this game goes on second and three gator is trying to punch it in again and really build the lead and put this Knowles team on the ropes etn knocked down right near the marker by brown but it's a totally different thing isn't it without travis there and his dynamic ability to change a game in one play, it, it feels important for this Knowles defense to make a stand here. They're, they're going to have to, but again, I, this is not just about Max Brown. This is about Billy Napier, the job and the plan that he's put together and the way he's changing up looks and making his defense think. Brown didn't look too comfortable under center, that's for sure. Took a quarterback sneak and got nothing. It's fourth down. No, you're right about that. He's looked very athletic and very much in command on every snap except that one. Well, Napier, you figure it at five and six, you need, you need something, and he's getting the offense out there on fourth down. They've gone for it a lot. They've gone for it 21 times this season. Only made nine. Only need one this time. You've got to hurry unless they're going to spend the time out. Yeah, they're, they're in no hurry to run a play, so they will, you would think, yeah, take a time out here and talk about this play. The decision is to send Trey Smack out for a field goal attempt on fourth and one. Though the 35-yarder to make it a 10-point lead, and he knocks it through. The analytics critics say, go for it on fourth and one. They always seem to say, go for it. Well, Mike Norvell tried to flip the script with that fake punt, but they had to delay a game. He sensed what you and I and everybody watching is sensing. That this right now is a game where the field is slanted. Fabian has a chance here. And take over the 21. A long-term thing like an ACL. He should be able to begin to prepare for his pro career. Johnny Wilson, big fella. 
Yards after contact by our receivers. The Knowles lead the country in that department. See why. There, there, there's the first example of it right there. And Wilson at 6'7", 237 pounds. Good blocks out in front of him. Bell getting involved in that. And then he just runs through it. That's determination right there. Toafili off the right side. A little indecisive on his cut. Manny Nunnery brings him down. Just a tremendous career. Remember, unlike the other Knowles quarterbacks who played at an elite level, Jordan Travis did not inherit a powerhouse program like Ward and Winky and Winston did. And when we saw him on the field before the game, I just wanted to tell him, I said, man, watching you put this program on your shoulder, I think that's what people are going to remember you for. Not just all the great plays, but really the, being the heart and soul of turning this great program around. Absolutely. A guy who wanted to switch to receiver at one point before Norvell said, that's ridiculous. Rademacher zips the throw. He was a little bit late with it, trying to find Keon Coleman, and it's broken up. Third down. He's just late here, and again, inexperienced. Player right here just kind of gets caught, occupied a little bit to the inside, and then he senses that ball's going out. There's nobody out there on that rail route, so he jumps it. Close to being caught, Keon Coleman, that's only the second target, one of the top receivers in the country. He's only had a couple chances. Defense secondary back there, a lot of freshmen. That's Devin Moore has been injured. He comes back today. It's important that number 28 lends some stability to this group. They bring pressure on third down. Rodemaker launching down the sidelines. Look for Wilson, and that time they don't win the battle on the contested catch. Moore made a nice play. Fourth down again. There he is again. I don't think he saw the football, but he's in phase. Going up against a big man, and he does a good job just by being in position. The ball hits the back of his helmet. You know, and, I, and he didn't make contact. He, he, he was there was a little bit of arm contact, but not enough for a call. And by being in great position, no chance to make the catch by Wilson. So here's Mastermano again. James Rosenberry didn't do him any favors with that snap last time. It was off target and led to a shank. This time it's executed pretty well, and Mastermano boots it high and deep. And Pearsall, who's still waiting for his first touch. Gator offense back to work, up double digits midway second quarter. Max Brown holds it, has some space, and will take off. Lost the football, rolled out of bounds. Dents, who's been very active so far, knocked it loose, but a break for Florida. Dent gets to him. He's able to work around Peyton, and then he gets into the open area, but there's that ball away from his body. Dent comes in with a left hair and hand to knock it loose, but he does. Ball goes out of bounds, and they get positive yards on that first and ten play action play. Got to get the ball in your right arm. Yeah, got to tuck it close to the body. Yeah, Ricky Pearsall just limped off the field. This is a guy that is the dangerous weapon, lines up all over the place. 52 yards away from a thousand yard season hasn't seen the ball yet and is now being checked out by the athletic training staff Johnson runs through a tackle goes sideways gets a yard and it'll be a third down at about six Holly we talked to Graham Mertz yesterday and he was telling us that he doesn't want to get in the way but he definitely wants to be there to support Max Brown and the Florida Gators he said he was at practice every day this week and he would stand behind the play with a clipboard just like with coach and he's let Max know listen I don't want to get in your way but I'm here and he is right here on the sideline he's involved in everything and trying to lend any hope that he can he said these are my brothers out here and I want to make sure they have my full support yeah, he said he was in the position he was at Wisconsin Cohen got hurt he had to step in and be the young guy and he was uh, appreciative that he was given space in that occasion. That's his tactic. On third and five, those come after Brown. Ball pops up in the air. It's caught. Wilson fought back to make the catch. He's a yard short. Wow. Lucky to avoid a turnover there. Yeah, they fooled him again with some of these pre-snap movements, moving the safeties around. Brown comes down initially, and it, you know you're thinking, okay, we got a blitz over here to the left. The offensive line make the checks, and then the blitz comes here. So they're trying to mess with his eyes, and it worked. Are they messing with us here? Fourth down in their own end. Offense out there. 
up 10 at this point. I don't know what the analytics say. I can't believe they'd say go for it here. No, no, there's no chance. Billy Napier's trying to get his attention. He's going to call a timeout. Yeah, I, I mean. <laughs> I mean, your defense is pitching a shutout. Florida State can't do anything right now offensively. You don't want to give them a short field. Gators punting for the first time. So here's Jeremy Crawshaw, the Aussie, to Coleman. Who lets it go over his head, and it's going to roll dead. And Rodemaker and a struggling offense that has 16 total yards so far is going to be pinned back at the six. That's not what's on his mind at the moment, though. After the 62 yard pump, Rodemaker is in his end zone, delivers a throw, and that's Wilson again. They have a real connection. It was Wilson who made two clutch touchdown catches against Louisville last year. When Travis got hurt, Rodemaker came in. He looked for number 14, and he engineered a comeback win. Yeah, I, I, I think, the way, you know, let, let's reserve judgment on Florida State and Rodemaker. I know you are too, but this guy's a coach's son. He's in his fourth year in this system. They got to help him out, run the football, and allow some of these playmakers around to make some plays. They've had terrible field position. I mean, he's been swimming upstream the whole first half. Benson's behind him. His one carry. Remember, he retreated and lost 11 yards. It was a big play in their first series. He's got the football for his second touch. And again, he's going to be dropped behind the line. Sharif Denson's a true freshman flying in there quickly. Look at these guys getting downhill. They're an aggressive mindset. It's right here, actually, where you're able to get into the backfield. An attempted block by Keon Coleman. And he goes right by him to get into that backfield. Great play by the freshman. So Benson, two carries, two losses. Sets up a third and seven. Gators walk up a backer showing pressure and they bring it right up the middle. Try to make a retreat and takes a safety. This struggling Gator defense had looked like this all season. Derek Wingo makes the play. 206 points the last five games. When I talked to him last night, after, on my way over to Ann Arbor, I landed and I said, hey man, what do you think about this game? He said, all I know is we're going to stop their run game and we're going to hit this quarterback. We're going to come after him, we're going to come after him, and we're going to come after him. And they just came after him on that big third down and come up with a safety. 17 penalty yards so far. 10 yards of offense in their 13 plays. Fitzgerald boots it away, ETN on the run. Etienne will return the ball into Noel's territory. And this Gator team just struggling to get to 500 tonight, really building momentum moment by moment here. They're young. Use one word They're throughout the second half of the season. We're young. I got it. Well, this is a reverse. They flip it back. And Brown just has to throw it away. A little trickery, but the timing wasn't perfect. And Braden Fisk knocked the quarterback down. Perfect to say the least. Yeah, Noel's not fooled at all, and it was Fisk and Farmer that got in there. And they're going to get him on it. He just tried to get rid of that football. They're going to get him on intentional grounding here. Intentional grounding. Offense, number 17. Ball be placed at the spot of the five. Second down. Billy Napier feeling it though, Kirk. You get the sack, the safety, you get a great return off the free kick. He's thinking, let's take a shot here with some trickery. It's almost like a sudden change with the with the field position they had after the safety and the punt return. Fisk hit him as he threw the ball. I, there, there wasn't a receiver anywhere near. He was trying to get the ball to the bench. Trying to get he the wasn't ball out. Pocket. Yep. Well, that pushes him way back. And that's, you know, Billy Napier, like you said, he sensed an opportunity there in plus territory at the 46 after the return. Wanted to go for a, a big home run shot. It backfires. It's a 14 yard loss in the penalty. ETN hops forward, gets some of the yards back to the 47. You know, we could talk a lot about Mike Norvell or Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator. This is where the lead is a team, this is a championship caliber defense and team. This is where the leadership of guys like Brandon, I see Fisk out there bouncing around, trying to get this team up. They're almost like in a fog right now for whatever reason. You know, and you're playing in a rival game. You just have to be able to get your, your your tempo up and your energy up, even though you're on the on the ropes right now. And it takes sometimes the leaders of the team, not the coaches, to try to get the team engaged and fired up. Brown on 
the move. Chased by horse and just throws it incomplete to Boardingham. This is a Florida State defense that's been equipped in these situations to make plays to turn games around. The big win at Clemson, eventually they won it in overtime. It was Kalen Deloach who came in, knocked the ball loose, scooped it up, ran it in. That play turned that game around when the Tigers had momentum. They need something need a play. like That's that. That's what I'm saying. You need, you need a play. And, and even last week, it was a sluggish, slow start. And then they were able to, you know, make some plays once Jordan Travis went down. And it's, you're, you're in too big of a game and there's too much at stake to have a sluggish start. Crawshaw kicks it. Coleman will let the last one bounce over his head. And it cost him. Makes the fair catch this time at the 10. Seven holes from the 10. Hand it off. Benson, that's his first positive gain after a couple of losses. He rips off 15 to get the drive going. And there they go. That's what you look for. Maurice Smith, the center, pulls around, picks up a nice block, and that's just great, tough running that time by Trey Benson, running through those arm tackles. Get a little salty there. It looked like Dimitri Emanuel, the offensive lineman for the Knowles, hit the deck, and some of his buddies were, were not pleased that there was traffic over top of him. They sorted it out. Jamari Lyons got over top of him. Well, really helped Rodemaker out if Trey Benson could get going. Here's a guy that averaged more than six yards a carry coming in. Rodemaker throws it down and slipping his Benson after he makes the catch. Also a terrific receiver, but he'll lose yards that time. Yeah, that screen, that screen game is not in play right now. I mean, they, they are all over that. There's a flag, Kirk, in the pit. And there are linemen downfield. I don't know if this is... The ball is thrown across the line of scrimmage or not? It was a loss on the play. If he caught it beyond the line of scrimmage, it'd be Lyman downfield, but maybe it's on Florida. We'll see. After the play was over, one sportsmanlike conduct against number 95. We're spinning. 95 is ejected. We're spinning. 15 yard penalty. Wow, that's Jamari Lyons. That's a specific announcement from Jeff Heiser. See if he can see this. Chris, yeah. he, it was getting salty down there. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And Lyons was the one that was on top of the player. Remember earlier where the Florida State players were upset. So now loses his cool on his second play and it costs him the game. He's gone. You do not see the spitting penalty called often. That's a spark. They lose a backup nose tackle and position the Knowles at the 39 now. They played such a clean game until that. Benson into a very clawed middle. Picks up maybe a yard inside of three minutes before the half. So you don't have Jordan Travis. You don't have the threat of his legs. Watch both of the edge players. Inside linebacker, edge player coming on the blitz. They don't even know that Rodemaker's a threat. And he's athletic. You know, maybe you go back to that. He is a threat to potentially keep that, but... Right now, the Gators aren't even considering him pulling that and going around the edge. Had yeah, the longest pass play for this offense, 11 yards. Travis, numerous times, able to create electric plays throughout the season. That's been missing so far. Rodemaker from the pocket, does press the ball downfield. On cue, finds Jaheim Bell. That is the play that perhaps could let this quarterback settle in. They're at the 31. Give Rodemaker a lot of credit. He reads the safety work to the middle of the field, so he knows that Bell can get inside leverage and make this throw right there on a the line. Great decision reading that safety post-snap and a heck of a throw here by the junior. 29-yard chunk. They began this drive with 10 yards of total offense. Rodemaker buying some time and makes a long throw to the far side. Incomplete. Wilson tried to get back to it. That was their first snap in plus territory in this first half. We're under two minutes to go. But the complexion could completely change if they could score here before the break. And I think this thing started by they were pinned inside their own 10 yard line again, but they get a nice run, positive run by Benson. Seemed to ignite him a bit. They got the penalty. Now they're, for the first time all night, getting aggressive. Torofili takes a handoff, and Lawrence Torofili banging through defenders. First down of the 16. Knowles in business. 
Good job by this offensive line here. Taking control. Jeremiah Byers with a heck of a block. Pulling a couple linemen from the left around. Now you're starting to see the balance of this offense and what they can do. They're only down 12. It feels like a lot worse. 12-point game. They will get the ball to get in the second half for us today as well. Tofili again. Trying to squeeze through an opening. Picks up a couple. Knowles do have all three timeouts here. No urgency at the moment. Tate Rodemaker and your Mike Norvell calling the plays. What does he like? You, you practice the red zone. He's had a week to get these first team reps. And he's got the big receivers in Coleman at 6'4 and, and Wilson at 6'7. He's off to the right. From the pocket. On the move now. Has to throw to the sidelines and Benson out of bounds. Pressure by Caleb Banks, third and nine now. That time they double teamed the bigger receiver looking to his right. He's actually looking over to Johnny Wilson. He took them away and he didn't have a check down. Eventually that pass rush forced him out, flushed him out of the pocket. So it's a big play here for the Knowles, third and long. Wilson split far to the left. Coleman's in the slot to the left. They've been bridging him on third down. Let's see if they do it again. If you bring pressure, Rodemaker rolls away from the pressure, files near the pylon, reaching and making the catch is Wilson. First down at the two. I'll tell you what, for a guy that hadn't played a lot of football, watch when this ball comes out. It's before Johnny Wilson even turned. Good job of making a turn. Great catch. Knee, feet down. Great catch. They're going to take another pick. Looks like they're going to take a peek at this. Make sure he had possession of the football. In the blitz that time didn't he to buy himself time another check here Wilson it's really about the ball he's in bounds but did he trap it right there Bill that one's all for you buddy what do you think <laughs> I've got a catch they're gonna have to admittedly go stand or confirm it I don't see the ball moving because of the ground his hands are on full firm control yeah he's got huge hands they were wrapped around the ball huge hands and he's six seven with that length that catch radius to be able to go around but shows those soft hands and a great, great throw by Rodemaker there. They haven't seen that Ian angle, Coleman involved at all. That angle's a little bit tricky for you there, Bill. They want the replay official to handle things unless they're going to take and shoot themselves in the foot. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, four feet. A tremendous catch. It's a very large human. You just you circle here. I hear the big fella. 400 pounds plus. Benson, Sutter step, muscles in, touchdown, seven holes. What a drive for this quarterback who needed something good to happen. That's the kind of thing that's also a part of rivalry week, right? Emotional games, you lose your head for a minute, you make an emotional mistake, and it can have a big impact. You've seen it a thousand times over the years in these kinds of games. And for Florida State fans, you, you, you want to see this and, and really appreciate this throw. This is a clutch throw. And I, I was talking about the timing. Look at this ball when it comes out. He throws that well before Wilson even has a chance to come out of his break. And it's just something you usually see with a guy that's worked a lot with receivers because of the timing. And then once they got that confirmed that he was in bounds, next play, Benson takes it over the goal line for the touchdown. Four drives. 13 plays in that last drive, 10 for the touchdown. I was wondering what the school record was for fewest yards in the first half, because 10 would have been in the mix. For the sophomore, I think he would just hand off here, not make a mistake, and then get to the locker room with a five-point lead. Verse has been a nightmare, really. Gets in there and mocks the Gator chump after making the tackle behind the line. They got all three timeouts. Mike Norvell saying, you know, let's... let's the very least make them uh, punt the football if they can get three straight runs and three stops. Hugh Freeze must, he must be kryptonite to Nick Saban. He, and Ole Miss, he beat him a couple times. He just knows how to call the ball plays when he plays that defense. Uh-oh. 
Johnson takes off, the Noles are called a timeout, and Johnson might make him pay. A huge play down inside the Florida State 25. 14 seconds to go, and the Gators a chance to add to the lead. Watch the backers get caught up in traffic. Now there's nobody there. Safety don't make the play. Poor job of coming up and run support there, and then it's just speed. So the linebackers get caught up. The safeties with poor angles, maybe underestimating the speed and the ability to get out and go. Johnson picks up 52. Sets up the Gators with a chance to, at the very least, get a field goal attempt before halftime. They have the one timeout. Johnson again, right back to work, has a hole. A flag is out as he is knocked down at the nine, but a flag in what you would expect would be the holding zone. And now an altercation after the play. Two linemen got into it. Verse was knocked down. A bit of acting there, but a Gator Holy. appeared to throw a punch All at him. Number 67, 10-yard penalty. First down. This is salty. Damian George, you talked about the tackle, his struggle a bit this year. That's the flag that was thrown. Yeah, Leonard right there grabs a hold of Lovett. And then Verse gets caught up with George after the play on the backside. But I don't I don't think there's anything. I didn't see a flag come down from that. No, there was no flag thrown on that, but Ver Verse did a did a, a soccer flop that was worthy of an Oscar. Yeah. Looking for another flag. Here's what happened. Number five. Oh my goodness, what a uh, down he goes. <laughs> Too short of his career long. And Florida State will take the old ice the kicker at the end of the half. That uh, was a practice kick was good for Smack. We'll have to do it again. Kick is away, and he missed it. This time he hooked it wide left. So smack a couple of misses in the first half. Rodemaker and the Knowles finally that long march to get on the board and cut the lead to five, and there's some more saltiness yeah, as they head to the locker room. Sure is. Well, Coach, your young cornerback, Max Brown, has been able to extend plays and drives with his legs. How important has that ability been in this first half? Yeah, really impressed with just his ability to operate, communicate at a high level, operate with a full 40. Uh, and look, we challenged all the players around him to raise their level of play, and we're getting good play from the line of scrimmage and the skill players. We're starting to see some extracurriculars. One player of yours already ejected. What will you do to address that in the locker room about the mistakes and how it could impact your team? Yeah, I mean, those things are unacceptable, uh, no question. It's a rivalry, we all understand that, but we need to play between the whistles, do things with class. And look, we know we don't like them and they don't like us, but we need to keep our uh, composure. Thank you, Coach. Right on, thank you. Things looking exactly the way they wanted, but give Florida State some credit for the way that first half ended, got right back into it. Knowles get the football right now, and kick off. Targeted twice, no completions to him. We'll see if Roderick can get him involved in the second half. Benson makes a cut. Started right and muscles up the middle for no gain. Time for our player spotlight brought to you by Royal Caribbean. And we'll put Tate Rodemaker yep. in that spotlight. It, it was a rough start, but backed up. And you got Wilson involved. And, uh, he went to Cruz as the Royal Caribbean <laughs> player spotlight, really. 30 yards in the first four drives, and he puts it together. Kept his composure, man. Again, son of a coach. Very low-key personality will serve him well in this situation. That's Coleman motioning across. On second and ten, Rodemaker has a clean pocket and launches downfield for Coleman over his head. He was well covered by Devin Moore, whose return from injury tonight has been important, but now Moore is slow to get up. And Moore is holding his own, and I, I didn't really look to me like Keon Coleman gave up on the route. Watch him at the top of this route. He starts to slow down there. You see that? Just a little hesitation affects the timing of that. Moore is still down, but Moore was in a pretty good position in, in coverage there, but it's not looking good right now. E10 on third down. Didn't have a conversion in the first half until that throw to Wilson down near the goal line. 
Four-man rush, time across the middle. It's Wilson again, makes the catch, and makes the first down. He took a shot right near the marker, spun free from Jaden Hill, and moves the stick. He's going to work from here and work across. He gets underneath the safety and linebacker, and then the ball gets on him and allows him to protect himself. The big man at 6'7", makes that play. As you suggested, they paid a little bit of tempo after the first down, trying to get some rhythm. Right back to Coleman. Coleman, his first catch is a big one deep into Florida territory, a 24-yard game. You know, maybe as he was talking to Holly, one thing he forgot to mention is, hey, we're going to attack the interior. We're going to go after those linebackers and safeties because back-to-back plays there, one to Wilson and this one to Coleman. Joe Feely plows forward. A lot of quarterbacks that don't have a ton of experience, Kirk, why is it that up-tempo seems to suit them? Is it less time to think, maybe? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it creates a rhythm, it, and it takes away, it allows your brain to be able to think faster, the ball gets out quicker, and I think the defense, re is their initial reaction to that is they lose their aggression. They, they kind of get on their heels, and it gives you a lot of confidence. I think the quarterback, it, he allows them to see it much cleaner. Well, he wants the operation to speed up. That's what he told Howling. It's been a very efficient opening drive in the third quarter. Benson has the football. Runs through. Tackles Trey Benson to the secondary. Trey Benson to the end zone. And the Nose claim the lead on a 36-yard run. Watch the block right here, the AT&T clicker. Really good job by Emmanuel being able to help out in a stretch play. you got to climb up to get to those backers. He's able to do that right there. And then you have Benson breaks through an arm tackle and has the speed. Takes that angle and into the end zone. The script in the swamp has suddenly flipped. Instead of the Seminoles with their replacement quarterback, Kirk, being on the road, all of a sudden, it's Max Brown and the Gators who have to come from behind. We've seen some games this weekend when, you know, Thanksgiving, go home, and maybe depending how the team's doing, you know, come back and get involved. But they have here, even at five and six. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was right after our game, and I saw what happened to him. I sent him a DM on Instagram. I was like, hey, man, I'm thinking of you. It's really, I mean, you hate to see that happen to, to really anybody. And, uh... My big thing to him was, look, we can't play, but we got to be great leaders this week for our team. Seminoles starting to take over the swamp. This is a big answer from Florida. Yeah, DJ Lundy a play behind the line, so it's second and 12 for Brown. Hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Boardingham, but Jared Verse again affecting the throw humongously. Yeah, it, it's, it's a move from, you see Fisk move to the inside and opens up a clean path for Verse to be able to come right in right there just affect the vision and he got the ball out but he felt five closing in on him now it's third and long exactly where you don't want to be against this defense with an inexperienced quarterback no show pressure again and bring it Brown this time delivers the throw over the middle, and it's caught for the first time by Ricky Pearsall. The top receiver on this team finally gets a touch, and it's a big one to the 40. Let's give credit here to the running back, because without this pickup right here, he doesn't have the time. He does a nice job. We just said, not where you want to be as an inexperienced quarterback. Saw that pressure, stepped up, made an accurate throw to give Pierce all that chance. 17-yarder gets him within 35 of 1,000 receiving yards for the season. This is their last game if they don't get the win, and it's been a long time, 21 years since the Gators have had a 1,000-yard receiver. Johnson, a big gap. Knocked down inside the FSU 40, got 21 more. Well, let's watch Jake Slaughter. We've said his name a lot when they've been able to hit a run a run play. Watch him clear this out. Off to the right, work that double team. It just opens up. It's a duo play. We have a couple double teams. Linebackers cleared out. The eye candy with the pre-snap motion there with the jet sweep, occupying some of the eyes, moved the defensive back. Just nobody there after that double team opened it up. Gators led throughout, and then two touchdowns within three minutes of clock play. Put FSU on top. Now the Gators trying to respond here. Impressive start to the drive. 
Johnson again. Lowers the pads, picks up four. Tatum Bethune met him. I, I, again, I'm just shocked. We, we've talked so much about Jordan Travis and how it's going to impact their own offense, but we haven't spent a ton of time telling people about how tough it's been for this Florida team to get a lot going on consistently with this offensive line. They've had injuries, they've had concerns, and quite frankly, tonight at times, they've gotten beaten in the inside with Fisk and Farmer off the edge, Peyton and Verse. But when they've needed it, they still have been able to find some creases to hit some big plays. Johnson again. This time, there wasn't much of a crease. He works for two yards before Deloach gets him down. It'll be third down to about three. Again, it's, it's hit or miss, right? It's either they, there's no one there, and look at that hole. You and I can run through it, or it's somebody's able to get penetration. This time, it's a blitzing linebacker, Tatum Bethune, who blows that play up. So it's been feast or famine for this run game. And Montreux Johnson's had a pretty good night running the football. He's averaging over seven yards a carry. You see if they beat it again, Kirk, or trust Brown to throw it. He's been efficient throwing the football on third downs. Gators have converted six of ten. Keeper. Space. And using those legs, the athleticism, John Brown moves the six. And you knew it was coming eventually. Florida State, he's reading the defensive end right here, Patrick Payton, who collapses down because of the threat of Johnson. Pulls it, now look at the space out there. And if that defensive back to the right there, 23, Cypress would have closed in on him, he could have flipped it to, out to the flat. So with Florida State, once they collapsed down on Montreal Johnson, they were in no man's land and playing at the mercy of Max Brown. Eighth play of the drive that began at the Gator 25. Pressure up the middle around the end is Wilson. Trey Wilson gets one block and then gets slammed by Renardo Green to the turf. It's a cornerback who's not afraid of contacts. And it, it, you know, Green not only tackles him, steps over top of him and has a few words for the Florida sideline. So anytime that happens, you're going to get some emotion fired up. That's a true freshman, Eugene Wilson. You and I had the Gators out in Salt Lake City, and they were talking and bragging about his potential, what he could do. It's a veteran taking on a, a young freshman and just body slamming him and then letting him know after the play, stepping over top of him. I think that's what got, obviously, the freshman fired up, and I don't blame him. It's Orlando versus Tampa there. A couple of the many Floridians in this game. Johnson, who comes from Louisiana, is swarmed after not much, and it's going to be third and seven here. They're just trying to pick up some positive yards here to try to give them a maybe more of an option with this playbook on this third down. Kind of a conservative approach, running back into the boundary. If you're slowing things down, they're taking their time on this third down call. Remember, they've missed a couple field goals. Smack is in range, but he's just one for three tonight. Here's Pearsall right here. Montreal Johnson split far to the left. Brown takes off again, slips a couple tackles, slammed down at the 20. Shaheen Brown's had an active night, and here comes the field goal team. They spread that defense out. They, they try to get the, the matchup with their defense, the offensive line against the defensive line. But watch how quick this defensive line is able to get around blocks. And, and once you have the disruptor like that, you get to the backfield, it makes that quarterback have to go left and right. And the safety is able to come in and make that good play. So a 37 yarder smack missed a couple of long field goals connected earlier from 35 and this for the Gators to reclaim the lead. And he does get it inside that right upright. So Florida, a 10-play drive back on top. The line. I said he needs to do something like Tua did. Remember the, the championship game made a terrible play, takes a huge sack. Next play, Devontae Smith touchdown. Look, the stakes weren't quite that high, but Alabama you know, needed that to have any short week Friday night. 
Trey Benson knocked down Oregon by playing last night as an extra day to recover. Huskies had to go to the wire today to beat Wazoo. A fact that they have one more day to, to rest and prepare, do you think? Oh, uh, I don't think. I think these teams know each other well. The preparation, I think, you, you, you just you got to get some rest. That'll be a big key. Now, Rodemaker, they lose a yard at first down. Bowles behind again. Coleman's in the backfield for the moment. Tofili is in the slot to the right. This is a wrinkle. Coleman could do a lot of things. He comes out of the backfield. Rademacher taking too much time, and he'll be swarmed at the 15 by Desmond fella. Watson. 400 pounds got home. And that tells you what kind of coverage it was downfield. This is a 400 pounder. It's a big circle. Watch this big man. He pushes, has to step up, and 400 pounds brings down the quarterback. Great play there. When he gets his hands on people, that's what happens. He just slings them down like they're kids. Good for the big man there. Usually known as a run stuffer that time. Beneficiary of pressure off the edge. Let's not cheat him at 39 pounds. He's 439 on the scale. Third and 20, clock winding down. Do they have to spend a time out here? They didn't get it off. That's going to be a delay of game. Crowd becoming a factor. I go back to Holly's report, what Mike Norvell said, clean up the operation. Prior to the snap, delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Yeah, they, they showed that on that first drive and what they did, and now they get behind the sticks. There's the play clock. Lack of awareness just from a, a quarterback that hadn't played a lot. Sideline decides to let it go. They don't call the timeout. Then you move them back five yards. And now, of course, you're thinking, quick throw. You know, they've thrown a couple of those quick throws when it's been expected. And then the Gators have come close to picking those off. The band in the student section breathing down his neck. Rodemaker. Steps up and looks for Coleman downfield and threw it into a very risky situation. Jason Marshall was there. Coleman actually broke it up to prevent the pick. And there's pressure again on the quarterback, and I think that's what affected him. There's Austin Armstrong fired up. Quarterback gets hit. He can't get a lot on the ball. You're right. Coleman coming back almost makes a catch to be able to make one of the great plays. But unfortunately, not able to do that for the Knowles. How about Marshall? The position he put himself in, he gets his head turned around, so no contact, no concern for interference. And the Gators could get great field position. Mastromano rolls out. It's a high, short kick. Pearsall makes a fair catch at the 45. And Florida got to pull up an upset in the swamp. We'll get the football back. There is a flag down on the punts. Let's check that before we take the break. Personal foul. Blocking while the player was out of bounds. The penalty being forced from the end of the kick. 15 yards. First down. So the Gators keep the ball. It was while the ball was in the air. Norvell getting the explanation. It'll cost them some field position. Back the ball up from the 45 to the 30. But the Gators will take over up one. But there's been a lot of close games and situations just like this. Jameis threw a bunch of picks. They had to survive yeah, that one. Up in 2014. Etienne off the left side picks up one. Because don't, don't you just feel like, you know, with 330, we're in a one-point game to, to just kind of take your point to, to the next level. It, this game feels like it's going to come down to the inexperienced quarterbacks. Not so much who makes the play. But who's able to avoid that disastrous play in their own territory to potentially cost their team the game? Exactly. No turnovers yet tonight. No, they've been, both been pretty efficient. Hasn't necessarily gone the way they want all the time, but you got to avoid that play that can cost you the football game.
Brown to the edge of completion, but flying up there is Jerry and Jones, one of the best playmakers on this defense. It's a loss of four. I love how he reacts to the motion. Watch his head get on his swivel. Right away, he sees that and he jumps it. He knows that when that big tight end came in motion, they're trying to get the big man out in front because they want to get the ball quickly out to ETN because they want to use him as a blocker. But when you react that quickly, that totally takes away that threat. And that's just an athlete making a play out in space. So here's one of those situations, Kirk, to your point. You got to be careful if you're Brad. Third and 14, you figure Adam Fuller might dial up some pressure here. Take time away from the young quarterback. They do bring pressure. He escapes, sidesteps the tackle, which brought down much, much, too much to gain to, to pick it up with his legs right there in his fourth down. Yeah, they, they, they ended up rushing. They brought the linebacker there, doing a good job on these third downs, especially from about the middle of that second quarter on of, of throwing different twists and, and moving people, linebackers and safeties, trying to affect his eyes and confuse him the best they can. Here's the thing, though, Kirk, in, in, in a one-point game, will the trend continue or will it be reversed? Because the Knowles are used to pulling out close games. They had a battle at Boston College, overtime win at Clemson. Had to make a pick to clinch a tight game against Miami. The Gators have let close games slip away frequently. That's a booming punt, but it's too long. 68 yards in the punt into the end zone. Like a playoff team in the last 16 and a half minutes here. Benson breaks a tackle. Trey Benson is getting going now. Games after the 34 picks up 13. Chris, you're going to love this. The counter play. You get both the linemen pulling around. Watch the patience here by Trey Benson. Almost looks like he's giving up on the play. He's just waiting for those blocks to establish themselves, and then he accelerates. Really good job. Instead of just banging up in there, he waits for the blocks and then gets behind them. Three-man rush gives Rodemaker lots of time, but the ball is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Cam Jackson got a hand on it. Big man, you don't see this kind of length in the interior, but the big man at 6'6", 206 or 360 pounds. Look at this big guy. Taking on a double team, he can't get there, so he shows that athletic ability by getting up to knock that football down. It's pretty good elevation for a 360-pounder. Sure is. Yeah, three on five. You don't figure to get the sack, but he affected the play. Final minute of the quarter now. Rodemaker faces a third or a second and ten. Play clock. You got to call timeout. They've had three delay of games. Travis in there averages 290 per game. Just 108 passing yards so far. Play fake. Ball down the middle, high throw, incomplete. Wilson tried to go up. Jason Marshall in coverage. Uh, he's trying to feel these linebackers. He, this is an RPO, and he's kind of feeling this space right here. If those linebackers run with the run game, you pull it. Now you throw the glance route right behind it. If he can put that out in front of him, it's an easy catch, but the ball's behind Wilson made it much tougher, but it was a good read. Travis is so good at the RPOs. He only had one RPO pass attempt for Rodemaker last week against North Alabama when he came in in emergency duty. Third and ten. He's on the move here looking to create. And just has to throw it away. Wilson was over there, but well covered. And the Gator is able to defend a small piece of the field and they get off the field. Yeah, these defenses are starting to really play well here they're putting a lot of pressure getting these quarterbacks into these third downs austin armstrong the defensive coordinator from florida has got to be very proud of this defense they have given up a lot of plays throughout this year they've had a lot of injuries played a lot of young people tonight they have played their best game by far of the year been especially porous in the last five games yep it was hard to see this coming frankly this kind of effort Mastermano on the roll Drives Pearsall back and makes a fair catch at the 23-yard line. Johnson's in the game. We haven't seen ETN for a while. And Johnson off the right side stumbles. Holly, what can you tell us about the star tailback for the Gators? 
Well, Trevor Etienne was limping off the field after the last series. They've taken him into the injury tent and they were examining his right leg, his knee, and upper calf area. They've also got three defenders out right now for Florida. Kelby Collins, number 11, Manny Nunnery, and of course, Devin Moore. They have not returned and that is really starting to hurt them on defense. Time to dig deep. Time for backups to step up in the final quarter. The Seminoles. Playoff hopes on the line. I'll stand my ground and I won't back down. That is the anthem of this Florida Gator football team, and it fits here. Underdogs tonight at home, up as we begin the final quarter. Johnson may have to go the rest of the way at tailback if, as Holly said, ETN can't go. Holly? Guys, ETN is back out. He's testing that knee out right now, his right knee. But keep in mind, Montel George Johnson also yeah. just got his ankle taped up as well. They're really starting to get banged up down here. He's struggling. Holly, I was going to say, uh, there at the end of the third quarter, when we were going to break, you could see him jogging to the other end of the field. You, you could see he is not even close to 100%. He came in banged up coming in. He's had to, a year trying to overcome injuries. Each back for Florida had exactly the same number of yards, 7-10 coming in. ETN has been the more explosive player in the last couple of games. Blake Lock is winding down on his third and four. It's important they get the snap off. Johnson plows into the middle, and there was no room there. Malcolm Ray is a backup tackle. It's fourth down. Well, watch. He's lined up on this shade. You're thinking he's going to shoot here. He goes back the other way, completely fools Jake Slaughter, and is able to penetrate. Good little wrinkle there by Adam Fuller to be able to get into the backfield with that defensive line. Napier, who knows SEC defense, he worked with Saban. He faces the SEC defenses every week. He says, FSE was an FE, SEC style defense. When you see backup defensive linemen, that's the difference. As good as Ray. State. Yeah, they, they have depth now and they rotate them in. That's a big stop for the Gators. That's a huge punt. Crosshaw drives Coleman back to the five. And Keon Coleman gets going. Look out. Keon Coleman could not place. Wait a minute, he's still going. I thought they had him penned in. He bounced it to the 43, a 39-yard return. He caught it at the four. Some good blocks initially, and Crayshaw's been hitting bombs all night. You just wonder if he outkicks his coverage here. This is what Coleman can bring. You know, he's a big guy. He's known for his contested catches. Shows you what he can do in traffic. I mean, how many punt returners do you see at 6'4", 215 pounds? That's why they have him back there. He gets upfield and he breaks tackles. He's tough to bring down. Norvell felt that Crosshaw often will outkick his coverage and they might have a chance for Coleman to make a play. That's important. Knowles with great field position trying to reclaim the lead. They give it to Benson. Couldn't get the edge that time. Picks up two. Derek Wingo made the play. Yeah, Wingo flying around. These linebackers have been tested in this run game and doing a very good job. He also got to give credit to the defensive line, keeping them off of them, letting them able to roam and run free, especially on the edges where the Knowles have a lot of success with that outside stretch play. Three-man rush. Rodemaker's going to take a shot downfield and almost intercepted. There's a flag down, but is it going to be on Wilson, who's worked a lot against Devin Moore on the edge tonight? I, I think it's got to be on the defense. Defense, number 28, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. He saw the end of the play when it looked like Wilson may have grabbed him, but, but it, earlier than that? It's the old classic underthrown deep ball without the defensive back getting his head turned around. That's a no-no, and that's an automatic interference call on the defense. Moore not allowing Wilson to be able to work back. Again, I always say if he has his head turned around and he puts himself in a position where he's playing the football, it's okay, but he had no chance of knowing where that football was, so an easy call for the official. Not a very well-thrown ball, but Rodemaker gets away with it. Wilson has been the dominant targeted receiver tonight. Benson makes a cut, started right, first back up the middle for seven. I love watching him run. He's just slippery, ability to break tackles, has great vision. You know, as much as we've talked about how important Jordan Travis has been to this Florida State season, that's obvious. Another guy, to me, has been Trey Benson. 
Transfer from Oregon. Boy, if the Ducks still had him, they might have a pretty good offense, huh? <laughs> yeah. Imagine. <laughs> Second and three, Rodemaker thinking about a downfield play. Does launch incomplete, trying to find Kentron Portier. Moore was in coverage that time, and it's third and three. They got some pressure off to his left. Line did a nice job of holding up, and tough throw, tight man coverage. They continue to go after Devin Moore, the sophomore. Coleman, slot left. Kai Douglas is over there. Wilson's split far to the left. And the big Rodemaker's man. 0 for his last five, Kirk. Wilson down at the bottom. Benson has the football. They're all over him. Big man Desmond Watson just swallowed him up. It's fourth and three. Think of the leverage he has when he gets into a gap at 439 pounds. He's on one side, and just like we saw with Florida State, he's lined up on this side, but then he works across, and he's able to get in between the guard and the center, and he's a man, that's a handful. It would be a 52-yard attempt for Fitzgerald. Instead, the offense is on the field. Huge moment here. Pressure comes, Rodemaker. Completes it for a first down to Ja'Kai Douglas. Pinpoint throw, and that's a strong-handed grab. They played zero coverage. They brought everybody here. Here's the matchup right here. Can you get inside as a receiver? And instead of going to Coleman or Wilson, they get it to Douglas, and he gets inside and makes a nice catch. What a play. First catch tonight. Clutch throw by the quarterback on fourth down. Now it's Benson back to work. Spun down after a couple of yards. Cam Jackson. He only goes 360. He's one of the smaller guys in the Gator defensive front. I'm telling you, man, it is a battle in the trenches tonight. The way you'd expect it in a rivalry game. The Knowles trying to hold up, keep giving these backs enough room. Florida's rotating D linemen, trying to stay fresh with their big bodies. Remember, Jamari Lyons is the guy who got kicked out of the game for spitting. He would be one of the dudes rotating in here. You gotta stay fresh on that front. Benson. It's Darius Washington trying to shove him forward, the lineman. It'll be another third down. We need about three here, three and a half. Been very impressed with Mike Norvell. Jordan Travis looking out, watching. Can only cheer and hope that his team finds a way, but. Mike Norvell is not panicked tonight. This game is early. It looked like it was getting away from him. He's got an inexperienced quarterback. They've kind of stuck to their guns with the play calling. Not any feel at all of panic from him or from Rodemaker. This time they're well within field goal range. Let's see what they do on third and three. Blake Lock winding down. Got to hurry again. Barely get it off. Rodemaker delivers complete. First down. Wilson muscles down to the six, and again, Rodemaker makes a play on third down. Now here comes the pressure here, but look at the cushion right here. He sees that. He says, I'll take that all day. Get the ball out. You're going to give me that kind of cushion to my big receiver, Johnny Wilson? Thank you. But the parents of Rodemaker, he's saying, let's go, let's go. There's dad, a high school coach of Valdosta. Let's go, baby, let's go. Go to the end zone, jump ball over the head of Keon Coleman. He was covered by Marshall. But it had a chance out of his hand. Well, look, they put both their best receivers on the right. They stack Wilson behind him. You think they're going to go to the slant? No, nope, the back shoulder. Throws in the right spot, just a little high for the 6-4. Coleman unable to bring it down. But he makes the right choice there. He had to slant if he wanted it to Wilson. Instead, he just misses connecting for the go-ahead score to Keon Coleman. Coleman's made a lot of tough catches this year. He feels like he probably should have made that one. Second and goal. Two tight ends in the game. That's Coleman in motion. Benson's got the ball. Benson 
running through arm tackles, battles down to the two. It'll be third down. Wingo had a chance to make a play, 15. He does everything you need to do. I don't know if that elbow's bothering him. He just, just kind of swings and misses with his arms. That's what you're talking about. Benson running through some of these arm tackles. Now we get to third down and goal. They stack them. Remember they stacked them to the right? Now they got them stacked to the left. Florida has one defender down here. Some confusion. And some tired dudes on the field. Play 11 of the drive. Benson smothered right there. No gain. Chris McClellan, one of the backup defensive ends, brings up fourth down. Chris, I think the timing of this blitz impacted the rhythm. He doesn't make the play. The play's made here, but watch how the blitz is timed up perfectly. Able to get into the backfield, and the slanting big defensive tackle that time makes the play. McClellan. So they force a field goal attempt. That's huge. Knowles can reclaim the lead. Fitzgerald with a glorified extra point from 19. But the margin is only two. Gators clutch to force that field goal. Norvell's team back on top. He's seen his replacement, Tate Rodemaker, handle business well enough, avoid the big mistake. And he's got Seminoles back on top. And now we'll see what Max Brown can do to work from the 25. Field goal will put him in front. And Trey Webb is in the game. He's a very talented young back out of Jacksonville. Very coveted five-star recruit. He's been exciting in limited action this year with ETN out. He's in the ball game. But the blitz comes after Brown. And they get him. Patrick Payton off the edge. Well, you got to worry about first because he's the guy that can really be a game wrecker. But on the other side, just as athletic and slippery as Peyton, he's up against the tight end that time in Hanson, and he just gets around it. So first is there, but at the end, it's the speed and quickness of Peyton. What a mismatch there. Usually you got a tackle on him. That time it's a tight end, and he takes advantage of it, puts him behind the sticks. Yeah, very long and lean. Comes out of the powerhouse program, Northwestern High down in Miami. It's had a great year on the other side of Hurst this year. Knowles fans making noise now on second and 16. Brown back pedals again and delivers almost the first takeaway tonight. Shaheen Brown, a diving attempt versus brought the heat again. What we just say, we keep talking about is which quarterback is not going to so much make a play, but who's going to potentially lose the game with being an experience and throwing a ball like that versus I think affected his vision. Sometimes it's not the sack, but it's affecting the quarterback, which is what Verse did. That's the first real mistake we've seen from Max Brown. He got away with it. First four and a half sacks this year. That's half the total that he had last year, but it's deceptive. As you said, he affects the quarterback very frequently and has again tonight. Brown pressured again, spins free, but can't escape. And he'd be brought down by Peyton, who had a monster series. Those edge rushers were enormous there that night. They have a big advantage. When you put Max Brown in this offensive line in an obvious passing situation, they're able to just tee off, force him to step up. You can see a good push from the interior. Nowhere for the athletic Brown to go. Great job by Adam Fuller and his Florida State defense getting them behind the sticks. We talked about the huge difference in the respective defenses coming into this game. Gators have played well, but the Knowles have imposed, and that's three straight three and outs with the Florida offense. Coleman this time backs up and lets it roll dead at the 39, and 5.37 to go. Forming in a rivalry game without their leader, and they're just trying to get out of here with a win right now. Benson trying to get this drive off to a positive start, but he retreats and he'll lose three. Derek Wingo has stepped up, made a couple plays here in the late stages. Yeah, we were talking at the break about what do you do if you're Florida State? You know, you still have five minutes to go in this game with his two-point lead. You don't get ultra conservative, but keep in mind, Rodemaker, six completions to Johnny Wilson for 65 yards. To everybody else, only five completions for 65 yards. So Johnny Wilson, 14 at the bottom, has been his guy. And he's far left. Florida's going to continue to come after him when he gets them into these situations to throw the football. 
Play action, launches to Coleman over his head, flag comes out. He was covered by Jaden Hill. A hand battle there. They're going to call it on Florida, but pass it to Defense, number 23. 15 yard penalty. Tell you why, I'd love to get Bill's thoughts on this because I think there was contact from both sides. Initially, I think it is on 23 Hill, but look at the push off at the end there by, by Keon Coleman. I flip a coin like you on that one. Hey, both. Hey. Initially, I both no question. Doing. How do you handle that as an official when you, when you see it both ways? Do you go to the first one or? No, uh, you go to the one who gained the most advantage. Oh, that's a tough call because Coleman definitely pushed off. Maybe yeah. keep the flag in the pocket. Yeah. Two tight ends. Jaheim Bell on the end around is knocked down in Gator territory. Such an effective play. You know, he, he is a tight end. They flex him out. But you and I saw him again. We always bring this up. We were in, he was at South Carolina. They played Tennessee. They used him as a running back. So he's got he's got great versatility. And he's in full speed when he comes in that jet motion. And just flip it to him. And gets to the corner pretty easy. Did the same thing in high school. He was a high school teammate and junior high school teammate of Tate Rodemaker in Valdosta. Good buddies from way back. Gators trying to get set up on defense on a second and five. Keeper. Tracked down from behind. It was methodical. And it let Jason Marshall come off the edge for a huge loss. All right. This is a fake up the middle, so it doesn't allow Benson to pick this blitz up. And because it's disguised to the very last moment, there's no way of seeing Jason Marshall come off that edge. Rodermaker turns his back on that play action, just doesn't see it. And it's a great job of disguising and waiting and holding on until Marshall pulls the trigger on that blitz. Got a safety over top with the freshman Thornton to help out. Rodermaker. Gets the poor man rush. Can he escape? Can he get there with his legs? Not known as a runner. Takes a huge hit. Flags come in against the Gators. And he is down and in distress. And I think he gets under a lot of the contact. He gets and the Gators hit each other. No, he's in there. He's hit. He's a defenseless player once he goes down. And the Gators have had some mental errors in this game that have been costly. None bigger than this one. The minute he starts to slide, the play is over, right? We've talked about that throughout the season. Brock Glenn, by the way, is the next man up for the Seminoles. He was the third string quarterback at the beginning of last week's game. He's a freshman, After the play true was freshman over. from Tennessee. Personal foul with targeting. Defense, number 23. 15-yard penalty, first down. That play is under further review. Hit out of Covington, Tennessee. There's a hit in real time. That was nasty. In that game of 11 yards. The really on the field for targeting is confirmed. Number 23 is disqualified. So the second Gator defender has been kicked out of the game. Jamari Lyons earlier for spitting and now Hill for targeting. So here's the true freshman, Glenn. You got three true freshman DBs in the game for the Gators at the moment with Hill being booted you'd be a shock if he didn't turn and hand the ball off to Benson here yep no nope, I'm shocked he rolls out throws and it's batted down at the line Jordan Castillo got a hand on it what a play by Castillo he was just kind of shadowing the quarterback reading his eyes he's a true freshman himself he just waits for that ball to be thrown. He's 6'2", but shows great athletic ability there in space. Just climbs up, knocks it down. He showed a lot of trust. Sure did. Land comes into the game cold. I think Mike Norvell is probably thinking, Florida's thinking that you and I and everybody watching is thinking they're going to be conservative. Instead, he rolls him out. Clock, not an enormous factor yet, but it does, of course, stop with an incompletion. Now Glenn, with a flag down, keeps it around the right end and is tackled after about a seven-yard gain, but those are going backwards. Offside, defense. Good call. Yeah. No one moved. It's just, there's another, another mental error for Billy Napier in this defense. Surely they're going to feed Benson here. 
Picks up a couple, makes it third and three. Florida's going to call one of their two remaining timeouts. Gators need to stop desperately to get the football back. And obviously with time, opens up the playbook on what you can call here. Kansas, he kills this, seeing pressure. Power formation, everybody lined up close to the football. Benson, first down, still running. Trey Benson, all the way to the end zone. Hat trick touchdown for Benson. But I love how he just takes his time getting through the line. This offensive line on this right side, watch this open up, and then watch the Gator to the outside miss this tackle. Good job by the offensive line. Watch the back, take his time. He's not gonna rush this, takes his time, navigates, feels right there is a chance to make a tackle. Another chance to make a tackle. Kimber and Marshall miss it. You cannot do that against this good of a back. He's got low center of gravity, great balance, runs through those arm tackles. The Gators defense has been playing well tonight, but missed tackles, undisciplined moments, cost him tonight. Trying to help him out. Love to see him fight through that hit that he took to get back out there to lead that team into the end zone. Kickoff is driven into the end zone. Teams have unfolded. The Knowles have found ways and made plays in crunch time. The Gators have come short most often. Oh, a sack by the offensive lineman. Jared Verse just shoved a blocker back into Brown and knocked him down. Oh, how, <laughs> fitting is, that one. how fitting is this to watch the big man who's had a great night. He's, what do we say, affecting the quarterback? How about affecting the left tackle and running right through Damian George? He's owned him all night, and this time he just pushes him into the quarterback. Brown on the move. Throws it away. It's 90 pounds difference in the weight. Jared Verse brings serious power. And uh, George, with a sack of his own quarterback, makes it third and 19 now. Remember when Verse burst onto the scene last year? They played LSU early, had a few oh, yeah. sacks, and we were all like, wow, who, 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 who's this guy? Albany. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what's going on? I think he originally from Dayton, Ohio. It was, just, it was fun to watch him last year. And then this year he decides to come back, continue to improve as a pass rusher. Man, he is not only that, he's a great leader for this defense. Here he is again. Brown lost the football. It rolls out of bounds. They maintain possession, but it's going to be fourth and long. You think he's enjoying knowing that Florida, who's been trying to mix up, win the run, win the pass, keep this defense alignment guessing. <laughs> Look at that get off. It's over. It's already over. Boom. Finishes it. He's enjoying playing across from Damian George. This offensive line is a, a major rebuild in the offseason. They got to use the portal. They don't really have any true tackles on this roster, and that's a tough thing. Facing SEC defenses and a defense that's like an elite SEC defense tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it. Do you think the fans at home can hear that tomahawk chop? They hear the swamp. They need 20 to keep any faint hope alive, and there's a pick. He threw it right into the hands of Kalen Deloach. And he's one of the big playmakers on this defense. Some high fives, finally, for Jordan Travis. This one is done. Max Brown, this is not his strength when you put him into an obvious passing situation. Jordan Travis fired up to see it. Young man has played very well tonight. He's given his team a chance. He just doesn't see the middle linebacker here. He's got a veteran in Deloach who's made big plays for Florida State's defense all year. He's just sinking in coverage, reading the eyes. Brown's more effective as a dual guy. Run, can throw, play action, kind of keep you guessing. You sit back in that pocket. I just don't know if at this stage of his career he sees the field well. Would have been the first in 21 years to do that for Florida. And Rodemaker will eat up a little clock and then take a knee. Well, I rivalry think games, so often it produces something like this. The heavy favorite of the team that has, has the much better season still has to claw to the final play. And I think a lot of people around the country, they're, they're sitting there, they're thinking about Florida State without Jordan Travis. Are they worthy of being that team if they end up winning against Louisville and winning the ACC championship? We evaluate and This is a tough one. Don't, don't look at this score and think Florida's 5-7. and seven. It took them. They only beat them by don't. Please don't look at it like that. This was a tough environment with a backup quarterback that had to fight 
take some shots. They're on the ropes early and give them credit. The defense made plays, Rodermaker made plays, and this team grew up tonight, in my opinion, and won a tough in a tough environment. Fell behind 12 zip, then outscored the Gators 24-3 after that. And Napier's team will not go bowling. They'll fall to five and seven. Another losing season here in Gainesville, and it'll be an unpleasant offseason for, yeah. for everybody involved with Florida football. This is not what they had in mind at the beginning, to say the least. Now, last year, the, the Vegas Bowl, they played Oregon State. This year, I think they had high hopes and finished five and seven. But just to flip it back again, the, the resiliency of the Florida State team, I think, that's what you got to really respect. We'll find out. I know Louisville lost to Kentucky, but you know the Cardinals will show up to Charlotte ready to go, and that'll be an interesting game for them next week. The Seminoles survive in the swamp.